morning, hey. everyone. Chantal's good evening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Rooting. I keep forgetting. It's or well, shouldn't be forgetting, but you know. Anyhow, an interesting topic today. We thought we'd talk about is broken. What does that even mean? And what does it mean for you? It's an interesting um, concept, Rory. I mean, I don't even know where to start with this. So anyone <laughs> who's watching on the replay on YouTube, you know, we'd love to hear your thoughts too because um, oops, here we are. Um, it's something I never felt I was despite everything I went through. And it's uh -huh. come up, popped in my mind over the last, no, be used. You know, hey, when you hear something, you go, no, but then you keep hearing it. It's like you see the car you want. You keep seeing it or, you know, they yeah. say that's. It keeps coming up. Keeps it coming keeps up. coming up, you know. And then I finally thought this weekend as I was doing my art, it's amazing what comes up when you are allowing yourself just to be present and doing something very different. The word, <coughs> excuse me, broken kept coming up, which I thought was quite bizarre. Hmm. So I thought I want to go and look. At, so I did a bit of research, as I do. What does broken actually mean? Yeah. And because um, I always thought broken meant, I took it really as physical, you know, you break something or your heart's broken or. Yeah, you know. broken and have to be thrown away. Yes, good right. point. When I think yes. broken, I think of something that you have to throw away, right? Yes, I like that. That's it or broken or has to be fixed or it's never quite right again or there's something yes yes mm -hmm. and particularly in this um society we're in now where everything is sort of like throw away breaks throw away get a new one because there's not the yeah. same it's not the same quality i like that ah that's a really good point to be thrown away so when i looked at it because i always felt i was more fragmented because i felt fragmented through the trauma and the car accident, yeah. I was disassociated and disconnected. Um, but it never occurred to me to be that I was broken. And for some reason, I had it in my head, broken meant was like in half or in, I suppose it is in pieces. Mm -hmm. And when you do have something traumatic happen, well, you do fall to pieces. Literally, I fell to pieces. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that interesting? And then you said as we were coming into the conversation, it's a harsh word. Well, it is. <clears throat> I think so. And I was like you, I thought all kinds of things, but I really did not see myself. Well, maybe I did at some, at some points actually feel like I was broken, but for me that was the broken and feeling like you needed to be thrown away right like mm. and I don't think I was ever that but I certainly can relate to the fragmented right that I could relate to isn't that interesting how we are thrown away and also somehow needing to be fixed if it's broken it needs to be fixed or can it even be fixed because sometimes things can't be fixed yeah you know, so I suppose I didn't feel I needed to be fixed. <laughs> you know, yeah. you couldn't just glue me together. And if you did, how <laughs> would you even do it? Well, it's like we we mentioned the the we just actually Googled it. The the Japanese art, what was it? Kintsugi? Yes. Kin right, where they Kintsugi, use gold. Yes. yes. Where they use gold to put together pottery again, right? That has been broken. That's right. And we didn't have enough time to go into the depth and how it came about. It was a really no. beautiful way of how it came about. But ultimately what they said was takes work. So doing kintsugi takes work and awareness in order for it to be truly healed or like truly put back together. And then it's a metaphor for embracing your flaws and imperfections. And that's, I think, mm -hmm. what we find difficult. Because if you're broken, it means you're flawed. There's something imperfect about you. Yeah. And that's definitely not what we're told is worth being embraced, right? That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's right. And so how could a 
something that's happened to you that's traumatized you and perhaps not someone else because we keep talking about this you know what's traumatizing for one or distressing for one is not for another so of course yeah. that enhances that whole feeling doesn't it well you know mm -hmm. um in my case and i've said it before my car accident in itself wasn't serious like others have had it but why did i end up with complex pdsd i get it now but at the time i didn't right so of course i was struggling with um all this sh shattered is another word now if you think about it shattered yeah. is also a strong and harsh word it is it is yet i felt more fragmented and sh and looking back now i felt shattered <clears throat> which is in fact also broken So, you know, it's sort of, there it's, isn't a way to put you back when you're shattered, is there? No, that that's exactly right. Like that's, that? Yeah, that's it. Yes. Huh. Yes. Interesting. The play on words, hey? It is the and, play on words. And I think. And you, of course, mm -hmm. go on. No, no, you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was just going to say, I've been listening to some podcasts lately where they really um, have been talking about you know, mentioning the power of our words and the way that we speak to ourselves, right? Yeah. So shattered. I mean, we won't say or you, we didn't associate or relate to broken, but shattered we did. I did, right? So yes. Interesting. It is interesting. And it is, I think, as you said, it is words. And you know, some people say it's a, uh, being pedantic or it's cement, you know, it's, yeah, but you know, it is that interesting thing. And I didn't even think of actually when you think about shattered, I was like, actually, it must be why I was, I was writing it yesterday morning as I'm coming back into getting excited about really doing art in a different way. Therefore, coming back to wanting to do my podcast because that's another one. What's the difference between excite, excitement and fear? But I look back now when I was writing and I, I realized now I didn't think I was going to get better. I actually couldn't mm. see my way through. It was such sludge, yeah. darkness just nothing was there I didn't think yeah. I was going to come back yeah I remember feeling that as well it was pretty terrifying it's extremely terrifying you don't realize until it or either in it or, or come out of it for me I needed to come out of it to realize that I had no idea how I was going to pull through come out was there a way mm -hmm. I can always remember when I first well, in the very beginning, I, had to, I went to the GP every week, plus the psychologist every week. And the GP, beautiful, older person, gentleman, and um, he'd obviously had his own trauma. And he said to me, I'm going to be with you every step of the way until mm. you get better or till you start. Kind of remember, and I remember looking at him going, wow, but how the hell do you know? But I always remembered him saying that because he literally held my hand and when we're trying to do exercises to get my back moving, he'd actually get on the floor with me. We both had to scrabble on the floor and try and get up with uh -huh. a little bit of grace and dignity. But he'd get on the floor with me and show me how to do the exercises. You know, and then I'd sit with me on the floor. I get teary now as I cried because I couldn't. I was so in pain and distress. But I look right. back at that. But he was like this, uh, in a way, you just given it to me, Kim Sug. He was like that gold thread. Plus the psychologist, they were the two that were there every week. In fact, I could have gone every day at that point, but every week I knew I had someone to turn to. Mm. I I had that safety valve or that that there, you know, someone present yeah. to believe me. Yeah. <clears throat> and at that point for me, because that was um, when I started seeing my counsellor and, of course, my GP as well, when I first went in, that was my biggest concern was, am I ever going to feel okay again? Yes, that's right. As, because you, I, I couldn't imagine it. Like everything was so overwhelming. I could not imagine that happening, right? Yeah. So they assured me that yes, it would happen. And it that's did right. eventually. So, um, but so tying that in with art practices, like at what point, because I certainly in the beginning, I was definitely not interested in doing art. Like that took a few months, right? Yeah. When did you find you started to, to feel 
some kind of a connection to art. Well, it's interesting because, again, that's what why the next time I think we'll do difference between excitement and fear. I started about eight years ago, did a really great online course, Flora Bowdy, she's American, and she calls it um, intuitive, brave intuitive art. And mm -hmm. I started that, and I got into it, and then I stopped. Again, it's that um, I didn't think I was an artist. I was too now realising too broken. But what was interesting, I'm just going to get a piece, when I look back at the art, and even though it was colourful, and I look at it now, see how busy it is? So it's still very fragmented. Uh, when I look back, uh -huh. you know, there's joy with the colour. So something within me was joy. But I look back now at my art and I still find it quite difficult, challenging to create those spaces in between because I didn't have it in my mind, even with meditation. My mind was so full of thoughts and fear and anxiety. It took a long time to be able to just into the space. Mm -hmm. And not yeah. try and work things out, not try and make, because I wanted to make meaning of everything in my life, because that's what happens when you've had trauma. Meaning, what happened? Yeah. What does it mean? Why am I feeling this way? And I think coming back to what you're saying about um, you will get better, but who will I be? Mm -hmm. Who will I be? Because you can't go back to where you were. Did you want to go back to, sorry, who you were? Did you even want to yeah. really go back there? But then you're in that in-between stage of well can't go back here I am mm -hmm. but how do I go forward who am I you know who am I am I lovable kind caring will I heal will I you know da 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 or oh, get confidence so all that comes into it well for me it did you know mm -hmm. and my goodness sometimes I clung onto the you know the top of the mountain just clung so hard you know I'm surprised I've got any nails left that they didn't get all torn <laughs> off because you know it's a real clinging feeling isn't it staying in that um, just trusting and believing, trusting and believing. And, you know, they had to keep telling me, you know. Yeah. And also at that point, the trauma did define me. Mm -hmm. you know, it did define who I was. And I acted from that space. And I look back now and I think, oh, my goodness, you know. And also then, then that then can be in itself another trauma, another trigger what did people think? You know, so it's interesting how it, go, it can go loops, 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 and then finally you can let it go. Because I realise now, I say this often, I've heard others say, you know, the trauma is part of me, it always will be. How can it not be? It has defined me, but it no longer defines me. It's no, I'm no longer the trauma, yeah. you know. And mm -hmm. my goodness, there's such relief in that. So how did you feel? Because you got back into art. So coming back, it's only now I'm actually getting into the art in, in a whole different way. And that's, as I said before, with your help. Aww. Well, you showed I... me how to free up. <laughs> Yay. No, I'm freeing up myself too. It's kind of fun. It is. But how did you um... find it healing for you when, you know, the brokenness, the art? You know, I hadn't, um, when I started painting again, I actually hadn't really painted in years. Like, not really. Yeah. And um, so when I started to get the feeling that I wanted to be painting, I kind of didn't trust it at first I was like oh I don't think I can like it's been so long for me yes can I even do it and and that feeling just kept getting stronger and stronger so I pulled out and it was my oil paints mm. and it was the northern lights so I know I hadn't painted in a really long time yeah. so I pulled out the paints and set everything up and kind of you know, looked at the, the easel and the paints and for a few days and then finally just did it. Yeah. And it was, it was amazing. Like it was, was it? amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In what way? Um, in, in the fact that like, as I was setting up the, like the feel of the brushes in my hands, right? Yeah. And the bristles and the smells because it's oils and I use turpentine on my brushes. So you have the smell that's still there, right? Is that like, and, what, like a memory? Yeah, 
it, it did. It, it mm. brought back the joy that I felt when I was yes. painting, like when I was creating the Northern Lights, right? And that was really powerful. Yeah. Like, and really connecting. And, and I think that would be my, what is it called? Kinsogi? Yeah. Kinsogi. I think that. Kinsogi. Hmm. Suki. So I think that was maybe that moment, right? The brushes and the smells. And yeah. that was the start of me kind of coming back together again, at least yeah. enough to, you know, to continue forward. Yeah. And I like that because what I'm thinking now too, is I create the art and I see the difference and, you know, um, there's a different energy behind different flow. And I think you're right. What I realized was like, I feel like I've come full circle. So many aspects of myself I've found again, but I'm I'm still not the same as I was then. How can you be? Mm -hmm. But it's the most exciting feeling when you get parts of you back that you want back, you know, yes. that I want to have back. Like I'm organising, as you know, for Willem, my partner, this exhibition um, to bring um, awareness to the yes. plight of our endangered um, black copper twos. And initially, again, so interesting how broken, I felt too broken in that context of getting it started. So I asked mm. someone to help us. She needed to withdraw for personal reasons. But it was actually interesting because then I truly stepped in. It's like that part of me. So she, it's like she gave me permission. I needed her at first. So, again, I triggered yeah. into that neediness. I can't do it. Um, you know, I'm not good enough. Da, da, da. I won't be able to cope because I still have elements of that in my body. Um, I've got to, my training my body that it's not always like that, but honor it. And my goodness, Rodin, the last couple of months since I've taken over, what a difference it has made. The concentration, <laughs> the focus, the excitement, the joy, the connecting with people again, you know? Mm, yes. Yeah, I just walk in, hi, doing that, da, 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 and what's coming together is going to be fa fabulous. And I'm owning the fact that I'm loving it and that it's going well so far you know, and I'm enjoying yeah. the whole process. I never thought I'd enjoy that again, let alone do it again, let alone do it as effectively. Oh, my right. goodness. I've got beautiful to-do lists and I've got the Excel sheets, who's coming, who's paid, you know, <laughs> all the expenses. Ooh. Oh, my God. And see, I lost that. That's why I didn't do well in my first business because I couldn't connect all those pieces. I couldn't get it together. That was right. the loss. That was the shatteredness, the brokenness. Now I can see I was broken because, as it says, it shatters your emotional stability. So you can't regulate mm -hmm. emotions. Um, there's a betrayal of trust. I, I lost trust in myself, the world, in people, you know. Right. Um, so therefore, I was so disconnected from myself. And I was disassociated for three or four years, roughly, after that. I always have that about that time, but exactly, I don't know. Again, you know, that challenges your sense of identity. Well, who am I? Mm -hmm. Who is this woman who can't get off the couch into a car who drove all around Europe and was taught how to drive in England and, you know, the Champs-Élysées and Paris and, you know, I was this adventurous out there gal, you know, travelling wherever, moving countries to can't get off the couch. Right, yeah. Mm. So, you see, that's considered you're broken. I was broken. You know, if you're wanting to use those sort of words, oh, you, it's an identity crisis. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So anyone who's watching would like to just put their comments or, you know, things like this, because it's, it's, yeah, everyone, it's wonderful to hear, or not wonderful, it's just interesting to hear other people's perspectives. So what are your thoughts like on that identity crisis? Did you feel you had that? Absolutely. Um, yeah, I really felt like I, I had to figure out I wasn't the same person no. from before. Mm. Like I just wasn't. That person wasn't there anymore. And eventually I realized I didn't want that person back anyway. So. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. Which, which was interesting. Yeah. Well, that's, it is interesting because it's sort of like, I didn't want that person back either but I realized for me I didn't want part of that parts of that person right you know? yeah and perhaps the yeah. emotional part the needy part the part that felt so hurt and angry and 
not understanding life and what had happened. I didn't want that part anymore. I'd done enough, you know, I was, I was over that. Mm-hmm. But so, yes, so it's, it's um yeah, and then they also say things like, you know, you have difficulty functioning, you know, and it's interesting how you, you function, I was functioning but not effectively. Right. So, yes, you could get out of bed, get dressed, clean your teeth, but even that was effortful. And, you know, I put on a very brave face. Right. You know, and, um, but what was going on, like, I couldn't, as I said, concentrate. I couldn't really formulate relationships. I was very needy or clingy or I wanted to be belong because I, I had lost all of that. Mm-hmm. Mm. And there was loss of meaning in life as well. And I realized, I think that's why I clung on to my skincare range for so long, because if I let it go when I should have let it go, well, who was I then? Mm-hmm. A mess of a, well, a broken yeah. person. I had no meaning then in life. I didn't have children, you know, didn't have anything in my life. So I hung on for just a bit too long. But, you know, you don't know what you don't know, do you? Nope. Mm. Well, and that's a part of this whole process is figuring that all out for yourself again, like reinventing yourself again, like, or I guess uh, not necessarily again, but yeah. Well, I don't know. I think it was again. I I think, and you just give me a thought there, as you always often do, is, but I reinvented myself numerous times in the healing, you know, slowly getting used, getting to know myself again. Who am I? You know, how can I, you know, get back? Yeah. How can I find those parts of me? How can I get my confidence back? And who am I in that confidence? You know, who am I as a woman, businesswoman, friend, partner, you know, all those things. Mm-hmm. And I suppose it also became once I'd healed quite a bit, it's who do I want to be, you know? Yes. That, when you when you got to that place, because I, I quite, I mean, it was, it was liberating, but but how did you feel when you got to that place? Like, who do I want to be? Oh, a sense of excitement, relief, joy, yay, you know, it, and life has taken on a whole different hue. You know, there's flow and I'm back into my, my intuition and trusting. Because I realized I did all that beforehand but then I had the spiritual crises and I lost it. And it was like, you know, F you universe, where are you? And, <laughs> you know, all of that. And, yeah. um, but at the time I wasn't in awareness of how intuitive I was and how I led my life intuitively. You know, everyone goes on about the law of attraction. I just did it at the time or things happened. Whereas now when I do it, I'm a lot more aware of myself, my body, my presence within me within the universe, within society, and where do I want to be? Mm -hmm. You know, such a great feeling. It really is. That's, it's a great feeling. Well, I found it to be a great feeling, you know, there's real relief. And to be able to sit there, because, you know, um, be seen and not heard. I can let go of that, really let go of that. It's like, Um, is it ego or confidence no it's it's not ego anymore it's confident I'm confident most of the time doesn't mean I'm not doesn't mean I don't still have my moments of you know uh, shame or I'm not good enough of course you of course I do particularly when I'm trying something new like art (laughs) (laughs) I think we all do you know so yeah how does it make you you know now your turn to sort of what did it do for you I well I was um I was thrilled to to realize that oh yeah I get to I do get to rein, reinvent myself to really figure out who I am but but who I want to be going forward right because yes. especially as we get older we don't you don't you're not looking at you know 60 70 years anymore no that's you're right at, you're looking at a much shorter window of opportunity right so it's like well yeah what what do I want to do with my life yes right that's right exactly right and I think 
And I look back now, I mean, I'm most, most probably broken most of my life because of the childhood stuff and all the things that had happened with moving countries and that. So, you know, very much the people pleaser and the, not being able to say no and, you know, all that sort of stuff getting caught up. Whereas now it's a lot more, do I really want to do that or not? Why do I do it? Is it because I feel guilty or pressured or is it because I simply don't want to do it? Or I do, you know, mm-hmm. or I'm able to because I can compromise, you know. Right. And then if I compromise and then feel resentful, then it's only me just, you know, it's like, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you made that decision too, so get over it. Not quite, yeah. that's a bit harsh too, but so it's all that sort of stuff that comes in, you know, when you, yeah, pull through and it's sort of like, you know, it's, it's I never thought I'd say, but it's like I sort of, poof, out I came. It's like, you know, the magic magician or the, you know, <laughs> the genie, she popped out yeah. of the, this darkness and out she popped, even though it was a process of you yeah. out, in, out, in, yeah. and you can, but suddenly it's like, oh, here I am. Yay. But then I had to believe in that. I had to believe I was mm-hmm. no longer that shattered, broken person. I needed to then repair that part, my mental state and my body to say, you're actually no longer there. You don't need to be there. Because it became mm-hmm. a little, your, your way of being. It became your identity. It's yeah. like I no longer need to have that identity. Yeah. So, and as a consequence, I can talk about it through doing this with you, through doing it through the art. Now I'm going to, I'm going to re-pick up my podcast. I've got my coaching session tomorrow night yes I'm getting ready to do that again because I needed to withdraw I couldn't and that's what I'm thinking we might talk about in another one excitement versus fear because it really gave me an interesting insight and then I'll go back to bringing my memoir back forward back into the present because now yeah so yeah so it's exciting when you can look at what's holding you back give yourself the time and space to work through it and then you can decide, do I still want to do it or not? Yeah. But it comes back now. I trust the process. I trust if it's meant to be, it will come back. And that's not being naive. I just know in my body. Mm-hmm. It happen. And in the meantime, I'm doing this event for my partner, which I am loving. Loving. So I love that. Anyone else got anything to say? Do you want to say anything else before we end the oh. session? Um, no, it's fun. It actually, it's put me in a bit of a contemplative kind of space. It's like, oh yeah. Hmm. Yes, it does. Doesn't it? Yes, it certainly does. Yeah. Yeah. What have you been creating as we finish off? Well, speaking of, yeah, contemplative spaces. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah. Yes. Very I love fun. this process. Yes. Well, I'm doing today. I just did easy. I just did watercolors, just, you know, what does <gasps> broken mean? You know, sort of and it blends. And nice. again, it's, it's blending and it's also connecting, connecting all those yeah. pieces back together. And also the pieces that I don't really want in my life, but will always, there will be a parts there that are just just Mm -hmm. life isn't it it's like night day yep that's how it is that's how it is so thank you for everyone who's watching and on youtube as well when it gets uploaded have a wonderful day and if you've got any thoughts or comments do come back please and let us know and if you've got any topics you'd like us to talk about share please do and yes have a good week just reflecting on any of these topics or if anything sparked an interest in you. And if you do do art, how would you represent that? Mm-hmm. Mm. Yes. So thank you, everyone. <laughs> yeah, that's my <laughs> messy fingers. Yeah, that was me. You can't see. Yeah, I love it. I do that now. It's in my nails from yesterday. <laughs> I know, right? Yes. And now it's oh, time well. to clean it all off I go look at me I did art so I'm loving it <laughs> my greatness to be a bit older because I did art with my niece and you know I wasn't at that point yeah. I can't wait if, if the opportunity arises to do art with her and look at all this sort of stuff how exciting is that so in the meantime I'm practicing like mad <laughs> <laughs> so that you're all ready yes that's right go. exactly right thanks everyone bye bye everybody <laughs>